Hey, I'm Andy McNeil, host of the Puck Portfolio, Canada Sports Betting's new hockey podcast. I'll be here weekdays at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time, providing projections, betting advice, and strategies to help you make informed bets throughout the NHL season right here on the Canada Sports Betting YouTube channel and wherever you get your podcasts. But first, I know a lot of you did already, which is awesome. Thanks. But if you haven't, please press pause really quick. Hit that like button and subscribe to the Canada Sports Betting YouTube channel. It will help grow this show. It'll help out a ton, I promise you. Also, stay tuned until the end of the episode for some information about plans for Friday's show that I think you'll all be really interested in. All right, let's get down to business, shall we? The Rangers at Sabres. Line movement toward the Rangers from minus 125 to as high as minus 140 at some sports books. But if we check out... Some of the sports books that we'll be looking at today, we might still find some value on the Rangers, which we bet yesterday on Wednesday's episode, and it's going to be important to tune in every day because you're always going to get that look ahead to the following day's lines. Uh, And this is a good example right here. So let's take a look at the odds over at Sports Interaction. We've got the Rangers at minus 130. But if we head on over to Betway... We can see that the Rangers are at minus 125 at Betway still. So a good bet up to minus 125. Shop around. You'll probably find the price that you're looking for. And uh, I like the Rangers to beat the Sabres tonight. Um, of course, you know, I know everybody's in love with the Sabres. And and and, and that's okay. I, I like them too, like I said, on Wednesday's show. But this is one where I just don't think the Sabres are going to actually, actually like exceed expectations uh, all that much. And... You know, I I did mention it yesterday, but I I think those expectations are resulting in a little bit too much love here from the betting market. So I'm on the Rangers up to minus 125, 1.2 units to win a little less than a unit. So there's that. And now I've got another play that I'm on that just kind of came about here with some news on uh, Thursday morning here. Flyers goaltender Carter Hart, he's recovered from his illness, wasn't sure if he was going to play. I had Hart listed at 50-50 heading into this game, so there's been a small change in the projection, which has the Blue Jackets winning about 56% of the time, but a bigger change in the betting market. I've got the Blue Jackets projected to finish with 77 points this season. The Flyers projected to finish with around 71 But the betting market is a lot closer. They had the Flyers around 75 points and the Blue Jackets right around where I had them at around 76 or 77. So there's there's not a lot of uh, difference here between these two teams uh, as far as the betting market is concerned. I think the Blue Jackets are are quite a bit better. They were incredibly injured last season and and I'm betting on them being a a bit better. Of course, they, they were one of the worst defensive teams in the last two seasons so there is that but uh, I've got the Blue Jackets being a little bit better than the the Philadelphia Flyers quite a bit better and uh, and therefore I'm going to lock in minus 115 to win one unit on the Blue Jackets I think that line should be closer to minus 125 um, I could justify making a little bit of a bigger bet but you know what I'm just going to keep it at a uh, dollar 15 to win a dollar here on the Blue Jackets I'm not I'm not a big fan of the Flyers I think they're going to be pretty pretty bad this season uh, the Blue Jackets, though, uh, they've they've got some some interesting pieces. Really excited for uh, for Adam Fantilli tonight. It's his birthday. Uh, maybe a, maybe a birthday goal for for Adam Fantilli in his first ever NHL game. Let's hope so. Anyway, Blue Jackets minus 115, 1.15 units to win one unit. That is the second play of the day. And we've got the Red Wings and the Devils in New Jersey opening their season. Billy Huso will start in goal for the Red Wings in New Jersey. And there's been a decent line movement toward the the road team as a result. Detroit was available around plus 230 on Wednesday. Now the consensus line uh, around plus 200. I agree with that line move as as gross as it is. The projection model has the Devils winning this game almost 69% of the time. So their odds should be around minus 225. My second, my third bet, sorry, for Thursday is on the Dallas Stars. Uh, but there's a little bit of uncertainty surrounding Root Bay Hints, a little bit more uncertainty than I thought. And it, it seems to have resulted in some money coming in on the Blues, as ugly as that is. The Stars, assuming they're at full strength, are a good bet up to minus 210. But it's definitely more of a gamble now, right? Hints practiced in a regular jersey but he spent some time working with the skills coach so 
that's not necessarily a good sign. Usually when that happens, a, a player is not expected to play in the next game, but but he was somewhat of a regular participant at, at practice. There's a little bit of confusion here, though. I don't even think the Dallas Stars reporters actually uh, actually knew what was going on. If Hintz doesn't play, uh, that'll wipe out my edge uh, down to minus 210, which is the, the number that we, we picked up yesterday. Um, but if you shop around here, if you shop around, you will see the Dallas Stars at Betway minus 200 that is uh, a pretty good price all things considered but it's conditional on rupe hints playing in this game so at this point i think it's best to wait and see as you can see the the stars are, are um a bigger favorite at some other sports books bet 99 has moved to minus 200 so that's that's uh not necessarily a good thing for the bet but uh, a good thing if you want to get in on the bet now at this point as you can see bet 365 minus 225 right now um so definitely some movement uh toward the blues which is a little bit surprising but you know with a player like hints kind of uh up in the air his status being up in the air that is uh that is what's going to happen most times so keep an eye on that i i would probably hold off I, i'm already on the stars i can't do anything about that but i, I would recommend holding off at this point but if hints is in the lineup um definitely definitely run don't walk to get that number because the the dallas stars are, are going to move quick we've already seen some movement toward dallas and and i think that the the the, the uncertainty around hints is the only thing that really stopped that steam from continuing in that direction and nashville also took some money as a home underdog at some shops and now odds vary from sportsbook to sportsbook some spots have the game lines uh, minus 110 aside others have the kraken as a small underdog, I don't love the idea of betting against UC Saros and the Predators, especially at home in Nashville. Uh, they're a team that I'm looking to bet on more than I'm looking to bet against, at least right now. But the the Kraken are starting to show some value, and, and it would be a bet worth considering at even money. But this is one one instance where I, I would probably wait and see who the starting goaltender is for Seattle. If Joey Decord uh, is in goal for the Kraken, it might result in a line move towards the home team. And in that case, um, I'd be happy that I waited here. So I'm um, no bet on the Kraken right now, but, but certainly uh, looks to be trending in that direction or, or nothing at all on this game. Same goes for Vegas. They should win the game 71% of the time, according to the projection model, but that means their odds should be around minus 250, which is what you'll see at most sports books, and that's okay. One big favorite is enough for me today. I've got the Dallas Stars. Uh, you know, they're, they're minus 210 on the money line. Uh, that's, that's enough for me. And I almost forgot to recap yesterday's loss on the Ottawa Senators. They came out strong but wilted after Carolina took the, the lead midway through the game. The Sens didn't generate much of, of anything until scoring two goals in 35 seconds to cut, tie the game at 3-3, and it, it didn't last long, though. The Carolina scored two, two goals almost as quick, <laughs> it seemed, to take their own two-goal lead. Uh, and, and I think the Sens are just too, still too soft uh, in their own zone, and, and that's not going to change overnight, right? And I think even if they are primed to take a step forward this season, they're going to have some trouble, uh, or at least I suspect they will, uh, against teams like Carolina that are really good on the forecheck and, and well-structured in, in their own zone and on the, the defensive side of things because um, Ottawa just was not in Carolina's league uh, on Wednesday. And, and like I said, I could see them having some trouble with the, the top teams uh, in the league. All right, before we get into Friday's card, let me talk to you. This show, it, it, it runs at 12.30 p.m. Eastern Time weekdays, right? Nod your head. But it, it, if you don't catch it, you can catch it later because there is a big emphasis on the next day's games, right? We're always trying to look ahead here on the puck portfolio. And and although the game lines, they're, they're, they're pretty stale right now. They've been available for about a month. But as the season gets going here and as... Um, it gets harder for sports books to keep up with with people like us that that just live and breathe hockey. Um, I think this strategy is is really going to pay dividends here. So make sure you're tuning in every day to the Canada Sports Betting YouTube channel and and wherever you get your podcast if that's how you want to listen. Um, but right, this is this is the main place for the puck portfolio. So if you haven't already, hit that like button, hit subscribe, and make sure. You get ready for Friday because it's going to be a big show. I told you I was going to have a little bit of an announcement here. And the announcement is that, you know, Fridays are typically a, a lame day for NHL betters, like two, three games at most. Sometimes you get a handful of games. 
But more often than not, it's it's a lame day for NHL betters. But you know what isn't a lame day for, for NHL betters? Saturday. There's always games on Saturday, usually too many to keep up with. So I'm going to help you do that. I'm going to help you keep up, head into Saturday um, with some some insights and information that will 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 definitely prepare you to make some some really good bets. And, and hopefully we'll get on some good bets each Friday. But Friday's shows are going to really focus on previewing Saturday's betting lines. And that's going to be the case this Friday, tomorrow, when I'll preview this week's Saturday slate, which is a, a big one, the first big slate of the season. So you don't want to miss Friday's show. As far as Thursday goes... We'll get into Thursday's NHL betting lines right now. I don't foresee myself having a bet on either of these two games. We've got the Devils playing their second game in as many nights. Of course, they're taking on the Red Wings uh, on Thursday, but they'll be hosting the Arizona Coyotes uh, on Friday. The model has the Devils priced around minus 230, which is the inverse of where Arizona is currently sitting at, at plus 230. So there is... No value there. Uh, at plus 240, I would consider making a half unit play on the Coyotes, but we're not there yet. And I don't think I'm going to have a bet on the Pens and Caps either. First showdown of the season between Sidney Crosby and Alex Ovechkin. The model makes Pittsburgh uh, a slight favorite uh, at, at minus 108, and that's pretty close to where the sports books have this one. So it's a short show today. Not much going on in the NHL on Thursday or Friday, but there's lots going on on Saturday, so you'll want to tune in to Friday's show to catch a full preview. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow.